kinetic energy is a real energy. Remember that energy is the capacity, the ability to do work. And um, a car going towards you with a mass and a velocity definitely has the ability to do work on you, to transfer energy into you. Okay, So kinetic energy is a real type of energy. We're going to now talk about a thing called potential energy. And potential energy is kind of a fake energy. It's a placeholder we use to solve problems. It's actually uh, a substitute for the work done by gravity. Okay, um, If I hold something up here and drop it, the Earth pulls it in this direction. The fact that it's up here doesn't mean it has a certain amount of actual real energy. The only reason that it has energy that can some that it can eventually do work is because the earth pulls on it. So it's meaningless to say this has a certain amount of energy. We can say the earth and this have some energy. Uh, but this potential energy it is kind of a confusing concept when we get really deep into, into the concept of work. But right now, all I care about is we've got kinetic energy and we're going to add this new thing called potential energy. Potential energy is an energy due to a position, not a real energy, energy due to a position or to a relative um, arrangement, in this case, the energy due to this thing's position in the Earth's gravitational field. Um, and we really don't have this, there's no absolute number for this. Okay, there's not an absolute number for this. The way this potential energy equation works is it's truly change in potential energy is equal to the mass times g times the change in height. What does that look like? Well, if I drop if I drop this mass on my hand, huh, no big deal, right? What if I drop it from up here? Well, it did a whole lot more work, transferred a whole lot more energy to my hand. Okay, so we'd say up here it has more potential energy. But Think of this. Remember, this wasn't too bad, so it didn't have very much potential energy. Well, what if I take my hand away? Hey, to my toe, that's a lot of potential energy because of this change in height here. So the way we do this generally is we talk about two positions, and we say the difference in height between those two positions times the mass of the object times g gives you the change in potential energy between those two positions. So let's take a look at that. If I've got, for example, here's my hand. Um, there's my hand right there, right? And then here's that mass, and it was one kilogram. And at the very beginning, um, this height was about 0 0.5, 0 0.05 meters. Okay. So we would say the change in potential energy going from here down to here would be mass times g times the change in height. When it goes down, there's a decrease in that height. We don't have to pick positive. This is height. Height, always we measure up positive. So this, it went down as it fell, 0 0.05 meters. 1 times 10 times 0 0.05, negative 0 0.05 is negative 0 0.5 joules. Okay. As it moved down 0 0.05 meters, the mass, the g, the change in height, that change in position, counting up as positive, gave me a change in potential energy. So when it goes from here to here, loses 0.5 joules of potential energy. Okay. Um, if I raise it from here to here, the height was positive 0.05. So this would be a change of potential energy of 1 times 10 times positive 0.5 would be 
positive 0.5 joules. Okay? Now, let's say it went from there down to the floor, and that was one meter. As it goes down to the floor, the change in potential energy is going to be 1 times 10 times negative 1 is negative 10 joules. So the potential energy changed by negative 10 joules in this case. And what happened, when you drop it, what happens is that potential energy decreases and it gets converted to kinetic energy as it falls. So if it falls a little bit, it loses a, bit, a little bit of potential energy because there's a small change in height. And so its kinetic energy increased a bit. And then if you get down here, it's gone faster. It's got more kinetic energy and bigger loss of potential energy. And then finally, down there at the floor, it's lost this much potential energy. And that energy had to go somewhere. So it lost 10 joules of potential, but it ended up gaining 10 joules of kinetic. That's called conservation of energy. We're going to talk a lot about that in the next lesson. So potential energy. It's not that bad if we just think of change of potential energy as mass times g times change in height. And that's the equation on your equation sheet. But we can do a little different. Let me first do an example. Well, I think that actually shows that. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to now do another way we use that potential energy equation. If you pick a point, a spot, a location for h equals zero, you define a, some spot and say that spot is what I'm going to call zero height. If you pick a zero reference, a point of reference, then we can use this equation. We can rewrite it as this, PE equals MGH. Because okay. we're always, this is a change in height. Well, here, if we call something zero, this change in height is just how far above that it is. And that will give it the potential energy. This is what I mean. I've got that, uh, a two kilogram box. Okay. Here's the ground. This is 0 0.5 meters. Potential energy at this location. Hey, wait a minute. I have to pick a spot to call H equals 0. You could write it like that, or you could write PE equals 0 at this point. Okay, so then the potential energy, when I lift it up this far, is going to be 2 times 10 times 0 0.5 is going to be 20 times 0.5 is 10 joules. Okay? So at that spot, we can say potential energy is 10 joules. But I could say, and I'm going to have to change colors here, I could say this is my height is 0, or potential energy is 0. Then I'd say, what's the potential energy at this location? 2 times 10 times 0. My height is 0. It's at 0. So here the potential energy would be 0 joules. Okay? I could even do it a third way. And that third way, I need another color. Uh, but the third way I would do it, I hope this is, will show up, I could call up here. PE equals zero, height equals zero, and I gotta check to make sure this shows up. It really doesn't. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to switch colors. Um, I could call that PE equals zero and height equals zero. Right? And that happens to be, I don't know, that's uh, three meters above this. Well, then the potential energy for this thing would be m is 2 times 10, that's 20 times negative 3, because it's in the negative direction. Uh, excuse me, it has a negative height. So 20 times negative 3 is negative 60 joules. Those are all, this is what I mean by itself. It's kind of a fake energy. It's something that we use to calculate other things. But see, those are all correct for each of these definitions. 
What you're going to do when you're solving a problem where something's moving up and down or falling or thrown up in the air is you're going to pick one and you're going to stick with it. So maybe I stick with this. Look what happens if this thing drops to the floor. Right? At the beginning, at the beginning, the potential energy is 10. At the end, it's zero. It loses 10 joules of energy. How about if we used this to be our zero height? At the beginning, it's got zero joules. Down here, it's got a potential energy of, of 2 times 10, 20 times negative 0.5, negative 10 joules. How much the change was? Negative 10 minus 0, negative 10 joules. You get the exact same thing. Okay? If I did it with this, I call this 0. When this goes down here, the final potential energy down here would be 2 times 10 times negative 3.5. I've got to actually write that down so I get it right. Right? Because at, at the floor level, it's 3.5 meters below my zero position, what I'm calling zero, zero height. So 20 times negative 3.5 is negative 70 joules. I started up here, I had negative 60, now I have negative 70. So the change in potential energy, any way I do it, is negative 10 joules. Okay? What does this mean? This means when you're solving a problem using kinetic energy and potential energy and conservation of energy, we're interested in how it changes. Well, pick one spot. I would say the easiest one to be in this problem is pick this. Because then you're calculating this. This one's zero. So the final minus the initial, negative 10. This isn't bad. Um, this means the initial potential energy is zero, and you can calculate the final would be negative 10, and so you get the change. This would be a stupid one to ever do. <laughs> You'd never want to pick a spot way up there for this. But it is meaningful to say, relative to the ceiling or whatever this is, the potential energy here is negative 60 joules. The potential energy on the floor is negative 70 joules. So I want to say, we pick a spot for H, then what we need to say is this. We need to say relative to whatever. The ceiling, the floor, the initial position, the potential energy is such and such. Okay? Once again, we only ever use potential energy really when we're talking about changes. It changes. And when you look at this, any way you calculated it, whether it was relative to the floor, the change in potential energy, uh, the potential energy started at 10, went down to zero, so the change was negative 10. It lost 10 joules of potential energy, but it gained 10 joules of kinetic energy. And we're going to talk about that concept of conservation of energy in the next lesson. But for the skill you need for this is either use delta P E equals M G delta H, or use delta P E equals change, uh, sorry, final potential energy minus initial potential energy, and calculate these relative to some location some reference point that you're calling zero height. We tend to use this a whole lot more than this. And I'm going to show you when we do the conservation problems how that works.